And good morning. We'd like to welcome all of you to our uh, annual production of our children's program. Uh, the play we're doing this year is called Just a Little Christmas. A long time ago in the city of Nazareth, there was a woman named Mary. Mary was promised to marry a man named Joseph, who lived there too. One day, an angel from God came and talked to Mary. And then the angel left. Now Joseph wasn't sure what to do when he heard Mary was going to have a baby. So one night while he was asleep, the angel came to talk to Joseph too. And so that's just what he did. A while later, the emperor in Rome, Caesar Augustus, said that everyone had to go to their hometown to be counted. Go to your hometown so I can count you. So Mary and Joseph went to the town of Bethlehem to be counted because Joseph was of the house and line of David and Bethlehem was known as the city of David. There were lots of other people there too. There were so many people, in fact, there was no room for them in the inn. So Mary and Joseph stayed in a stable, which was a place for animals to stay warm and dry. There was a cow there, there was a sheep there, there was a chicken there, and Mary and Joseph stayed there too. And while they were there, baby Jesus was born, and Mary took him and wrapped him up warm and laid him in the manger. There were some shepherds out in the fields watching over their flocks of sheep. And the angel came and talked to the shepherds, and they were terribly afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I bring good news. The Savior, which is Christ the Lord, has been born today. In the you will find the, the baby wrapped in the <laughs> All of a sudden, there were lots of angels saying, Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. And the angels left. And when the angels had left, the shepherds went and found the baby Jesus in the manger, just as they had, as they had been told. And when they found him, they worshipped him. Not far away in a place called Jerusalem, there lived an evil king named Herod. One day after baby Jesus had been born, wise men came to Jerusalem looking for the newly born King of the Jews. They asked King Herod where he was. So the king asked his advisors, Where is this king to be born king of Jews? In Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. Um, in Bethlehem. Go find him so I can worship him. 
So the wise men went and found baby Jesus by following his star, and when they found him, they worshipped him. But King Herod didn't really want to worship baby Jesus. He wanted to harm him. The wise men were warned by God about this, so they went home another way. When the king found out he was tricked, he was really mad. <laughs> he was determined to destroy this newborn king, so King Herod sent his soldiers to Bethlehem to find the baby Jesus. Go find him and destroy him. But God warned Joseph in a dream to get out of there. And so they did. And so Joseph and Mary and the little baby Jesus went to Egypt and they stayed there until the evil King Herod died. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> After King Herod died, God told Joseph it was safe to come back because the people who wanted the child dead had now died. You can come back now, it's safe. <laughs> Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus came back from Egypt and they went to live in the town of Nazareth again. And that's where baby Jesus grew up until he was grown. And now you've heard it all about God had sent his only son to be born as a baby so that later he could save everyone from their sins and all it took was just a little Christmas. Of course, we don't have time uh, to depict in one service uh, all the times that had passed um, and to start the story at the beginning. But I wanted to go back a little bit further than the angel coming to Mary to the beginning of the story. And how shall I put this in a way that we might understand? Well, you all know Christmas songs so well, so let's start with a song. Let's start with, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. So that's the state of the people waiting and longing for God to do something, to do anything really to help them because they were in a state of darkness. God promised that help was coming, and we read about the promise in a number of places in the scriptures, but one of the places is in Isaiah chapter 42. And I'm going to read some of that for you now. Here is my servant, says the prophet Isaiah, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he dis establishes justice on the earth. In his law the islands put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, he who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes of it, 
who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. So the story begins in darkness, with a people sitting in darkness, mourning in lonely exile, as the song says. And the Lord, many, many years, centuries even, before we start away in a manger, the Lord promised that a servant would come. And we see the promise fulfilled in the very story that we saw depicted this morning. If you were to read about that story in the Gospel of John, the Apostle John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. How could we put that in a way that you might understand? How about a song? And ye beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow, look now, for glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing, O rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. Hear the angels sing of the glad and golden hours that come with the light of the world. Thus for people today who find themselves all too often in a state of chaos and despair, when we are weighted down by the forces that seek to destroy life as we know it, we need to accept the fact that we are often no more than bruised weed, reeds and dimly burning wicks. That as we stand beneath life's crushing load with forms bending low, as the songwriter and theologian Leonard Cohen says beautifully in his song Anthem, he says, forget your perfect offering, there's a crack in everything, that's where the light gets in. That is where the light comes in. God's grace and power works exactly where we are broken and where we are most fragile. How about another song? O come, thou day spring, come and cheer. Our spirits by thine advent here disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. So the good news from our story this morning that we saw depicted that first Christmas is that the day spring, the dawn, did come and cheer our spirits, dispersing the gloomy clouds of night. But there is more good news that comes from our story that was told today. Jesus is the light of the world. He came into this world even as we were bruised and bending low, dimly burning and walking with painful steps. And that is precisely where the light of Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, comes to bring light and life to us. Jesus, in other words, is the light of the world. But you know, Scripture tells us another thing about who is the light of the world. And that's found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, where Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You, meaning the audience to which Jesus was speaking. And way back at the beginning, beginning of the story, when people were sitting in darkness, God said the same thing. God promised a servant, but through his prophet, God also promised this, I will make you a light for the Gentiles. Yes, this hurting people, the people who were sitting in darkness, were promised not only that they would receive a servant, the light of the world, but they were promised that they themselves would be a light for the Gentiles. And where you hear that word Gentiles, just substitute the word the rest of the world, because a Gentile was really a person who was not Jewish. So obviously, if you're talking to Jewish people, you're talking about the rest of the world. The message came to us through God's prophet that the people would be a light to the world. And so in the midst of these difficult times, when we feel helpless and out of control, we learn that even in the midst of dire circumstances, we still have the power to make a difference in the lives of people around us. Even if we find ourselves in a completely hopeless situation, we can nurture compassion's power. That means 
that even on our most disturbing of days, we have the ability to do good things, to look beyond our own problems, and to direct our focus to the other. We're promised a light, and that promise came true in the birth of Jesus. But we're also promised that we ourselves will be a light. Recall the song we sang at the outset of the service today. We light a thousand candles bright all over the earth today, and all the beams will shine across heaven's grand display. Yes, over land and sea tonight the joyful message brings the birth of him, our Lord and Christ, our Savior and our King. So we take the message with us as we become lights, like little candles, all throughout the world. The light of the world has come, and we are witnesses to the light. And then we carry the light with us over land and sea and bring the joyful message of the birth of him, our Lord and Christ, our Savior and our King. Now you may have heard at some point this holiday season or in the past the familiar phrase, remember to keep Christ in Christmas. And that's important, but I think it's perhaps even more important to remember that we ourselves are bearers of Christ, and we are light to a hurting world. And so maybe it's more important even than that to keep Christ in Christians. One writer says it this way, as a person of faith, you do not have to keep Christ in Christmas because he's already there. He's there with the lonely and the depressed and the joyful and the confused. He's there with the widow and the orphan and with you and with me. As people of faith in these places, fueled by grace and love and hospitality, we can not necessarily bring Christ back to Christmas, but we can be Christ to the world and join him in the work he is already doing. So as we go from here, with the story of Christmas once again fresh in our minds, May we who have seen the light of the star bring this light to the rest of the world. As we sang before, let us leave our contemplations for brighter visions, seeking the desire of nations, bringing his light to the hurting world. Amen. Would you pray with me as we close this morning? God of light, you sent a savior into the world to bring justice and to release all who are in bondage. We ask that you would shine this light upon us now and show us how to bring justice and peace to all those who suffer. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.